Well, good evening again to those of you joining me who were in chat in the first kind of minute or so before I went live. Good evening. I hope we are all well uh, and uh, having a nice time out there. It's dark, you know, but it's going to get lighter, isn't it? The lighter nights are coming and then they'll be gone again and it'll be winter nights again and it'll still be dark when I go out. <laughs> so it doesn't really matter, does it? On tonight's show, uh, we're going to be looking at this, which is the Evic S, or the Evic Supreme, that I've been playing around with. Yes, we'll be looking at that uh, in the first half. And in the second half, I've got some uh, video on the MVR software. Yeah, which you can do all sorts of what have you. Having a really good play with that, that I have. Um, and, uh, and then next week I'll do a little update because um, I'll have some more information but you'll see more you'll see more in part two on that one um, but all of that all of that can't happen until you've seen the titles so here they are the scene is proudly sponsored by Health EV UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e -liquid. Yes, good evening and welcome to Vapor Scene here on vapetrails.tv. It is Tuesday, the uh, 6th of May. Yeah, just looking across there to make sure I did give you the right date. Uh, Tuesday, the 6th of May, 2014. Hope we are all well and uh, having a good week so far after the bank holiday weekend. It's strange, isn't it? After a bank holiday Monday, if you don't wear them, um, the Tuesday always feels like a Monday, doesn't it? But then the end of the week comes quicker. So it's not too bad, not too bad at all. Um, and yes, lots of stuff uh, going on all over the world in the, uh, in the realms of e-cigs and vaping. Uh, and I'm going to start this week with something that I spotted a little earlier on Twitter uh, that Cerulean C tweeted. Um, yeah, uh, you see what this is? This is only a beeping smartphone app for collecting cigs across the EU. Go get it she says, and uh, here it is on uh, Google Play. Uh, I'm not sure if it's available for iPhones, um, but it is available for the Android platform. So uh, get yourself over to Google Play and install it, uh, and then you can get people to sign up on your various smart devices, be that a tablet or be that your phone. Yeah, so that was, uh, that was quite a nice find this afternoon. Uh, and. Uh, I've got some other stuff that was on Twitter uh, late last week, uh, and uh, it's this. Yes, nicotine is harmless. Uh, that was uh, tweeted by Snus Connoisseur, uh, and I've uh, enlarged these slides a little bit. So let's have a little look. The similarity of nicotine and caffeine. They're both plant alkaloids, and they're both stimulants. They both enhance concentration, performance, a sense of well-being and to elevate your mood uh, and on the addiction side there is a psychic dependence a, a tolerance and also withdrawal symptoms I for one know that after a weekend staying at someone's house and all they had was uh, decaffeinated coffee I severely had withdrawals by Monday morning I can tell you um, as, as you know I do like my coffee uh, and the second one on the uh, cardiovascular um, differences. They both do increase your heart rate, uh, they both increase your blood pressure and they are both vascular constrictors uh, and that will increase your your blood pressure if uh, your vasculars are being constricted. Um, yes, if your arteries are being constricted because of the, uh, the nicotine or the caffeine. Um, do they cause cancer? Definitively no. Do they cause lung disease? Definitively no. 
uh, and will they cause cardiovascular disease? Not likely. Yeah, interesting stuff that, and it's a shame that uh, certain MPs, MEPs, governments, um, health authorities like the MHRA uh, and the FDA and the, uh, the one in Australia that I can't remember the acronym for, uh, it's a shame they don't look at that kind of information, isn't it, instead of uh, pulling stuff out of the air. Um, and that leads me to uh, my next little piece, um, which comes from The Economist. Yeah, uh, and this was uh, on May the 3rd. Uh, and it says, uh, electronic cigarettes made their American debut seven years ago. People have bickered about them ever since. Some praise e-cigarettes which deliver a vapour with nicotine, but no tobacco, for helping traditional smokers to quit. Others feel, others fret, however, uh, that they will promote nicotine addiction and reduce the stigma of smoking, which in America now ranks somewhere between theft and public indecency. Now I have to say, <laughs> the last time I was in America, I was walking, and I was smoking as well, I was walking down the street in Greenwich Village, uh, and I walked on the pavement, or the sidewalk, as they uh, call it over there, uh, and I was abused, verbally abused, for smoking by a stall holder. Very strange. Anyway, back to the story. So, on April 24th, American regulators stepped in, uh, as the European Parliament did in February. The FDA proposed rules for e-cigarettes, these would, among other things, ban sales to children and require firms to list ingredients, include warnings that nicotine is addictive, and register new products with the agency. The FDA did not propose banning flavours or advertising, but may do so in the future. It will accept comments of its plan until July the 9th. Even after it finalises this set of rules, it may later issue further restrictions. And on my next little slide, one reason for this jumble is the information about e-cigarettes, what they contain, who uses them, and under what circumstances is still cloudy. Last year, The Lancet, a medical journal, reported that e-cigarettes were as effective as nicotine patches in prompting smokers to quit. But the FDA cautions that the evidence is still slim. E-cigarettes may feed smokers addiction when they cannot puff tobacco rather than promoting them to abstain. Non-smokers might start vaping, and different studies found that e-cigarettes contain different amounts of nicotine and other toxins. Well, we all know that different e-cigarettes will contain different amounts of nicotine because we all use different juices. Um, and there may be very slight variations in the amount of nicotine from bottle to bottle, but it should be quite a minuscule difference. Um, it's all this thing about abstinence, isn't it? They want us just to stop. Why just won't they let us just enjoy nicotine, like we enjoy caffeine, um, in the same way? Um, and that leads me to the story in relation to the ban in LA. It is now illegal to use e-cigarettes and vape in enclosed places, uh, in areas outside, like public parks, and also if you're sitting outside a restaurant, you cannot vape. Have a little look at this. In just about six hours, Los Angeles will join Chicago and New York City in putting into effect a strict on electronic cigarettes in public places. We told you last month that the Los Angeles City Council had voted to treat e-cigarettes like any other tobacco product. Now, this ban will start at midnight tonight, but there is one bar that is giving its customers one last chance. NBC4's Hetty Chang is live for us at the Cindy Club right now with how the ban impacts you. Hetty? Chuck, that's right. We are in front of the Cindy Club that opens its doors at 9 o'clock tonight for an event that they're calling The Last Vape. That's because by midnight tonight, vaping devices like this one here will be banned there and a lot of other places. Just before the clock strikes midnight at the Cindy Club on Beverly Boulevard, vapees will be taking out their vaping devices of choice and taking those final puffs. I invited all the e-cigarette smokers to come on by until the last minute. This club is making an event out of LA's e-cig ban that goes into effect at midnight. It means people who vape won't be able to at indoor workplaces like bars and restaurants and public places like parks and outdoor dining areas. Those regulations should be narrowly tailored. The LA City Council unanimously passed the ban last month despite opposition from vaping proponents like Max Wu who runs the Vape Day Vape Shop. 
We feel that it's completely different what we're selling. Um, we're not selling tobacco. Wu feels banning e-cigarettes everywhere tobacco products are banned is just unfair. And you also have proponents like Vito Romani, who says vaping has helped them quit smoking traditional cigarettes. I have a kid and I don't want to be smoking my whole life and this is the only thing I've found that actually helped me. No problem, says L.A. City Councilman Mitchell Farrell, one of the sponsors of the ban. But he says the ban is about protecting everyone's health and rights. You can still go out and, and vape all you want and like people can smoke all they want. We just are regulating it so that uh, it does not impact people who don't uh, proactively want to be around it. Of course, there are exceptions to the rule. Vaping lounges and retail stores specifically selling vaping devices like the one we saw in the story there are exempt from the ban. We're live near Koreatown tonight. Hetty Chang, NBC4 News. It's the last night that you can legally vape inside bars and restaurants in Los Angeles. E-cigarette users will be snuffed out in less than an hour. NBC4's Kate Larson is live in Koreatown now with the last gasp tonight. Kate? Chuck, that's right. This is the last hour before vaporizers go the way of the cigarette outside. Meanwhile, inside at the Cindy Club here on Beverly Boulevard, so-called vapors are enjoying their last legal indoor puffs, and the owner, he's not happy about it. It is frustrating uh, only because customers aren't going to be happy. They're going to have to be vaping outside, which I think is really ridiculous because they're considering it the same thing as cigarettes right now. What Park means by that is that LA's new ordinance bans e-cigs from the same places cigarette smoking is not allowed. Indoor workplaces, bars, restaurants, and public spaces like parks and outdoor dining areas. But e-cigs have not yet been deemed a tobacco product by the FDA. There also have been no long-term health studies on the risk of the nicotine delivery devices. Vaping proponents, though, will tell you the vapor is completely harmful. Harmless, but backers of the ban, like LA City Councilman Mitch O'Farrell, say there are studies that show aerosol and chemicals released into the air from the vapor can cause health problems. We need to do all we can uh, with, with what we know now to protect the public health. It became a real issue at our public schools. Um, youth were sneaking in e cigarettes and vaping under their desks and, and such. So we don't want to expose a whole new generation to normalizing. E cigarette use. The LA City Council unanimously passed the ban last, last month, but Councilman Joe Buscayano tried to pass an amendment to allow the devices in bars. It failed, and he released this statement today. He says, without conclusive evidence that secondhand vapor from e cigarettes is harmful, I do not believe we should have been in such a hurry to put so many restrictions on where adults can use a legal product. Now, despite inconclusive health studies, a lot of businesses are really frustrated with the new regulation. In fact, I spoke to the manager of the very popular outdoor restaurant home in Los Feliz, and he says he's worried his customers will continue vaping outside, but not inside his business. And of course, this is not the last we'll hear from this issue. Reporting live in Koreatown, Kate Larson, NBC4 News. Yeah, so there you go. You can be in the middle of a public park with not one single person around you for 100 metres or 100 feet in any direction and it will be illegal to use your vaping device. How bizarre is that? Uh, but yet shops are allowed. You can still vape in shops and you can still vape in vaping lounges. But I'm pretty sure, <laughs> I'll have to check it out, but I bet the vaping lounges can't serve any drinks, any beverages or any food of any type because then that would be a bar or a restaurant, wouldn't it? Um, but I wonder what the loopholes are for the businesses over in LA. And of course, where's next? It's going to go all across America, isn't it? Um, let's just hope sense is seen in this country um, because uh, that would just be ridiculous, wouldn't it? Totally ridiculous. Um, Yes, vaping under the desk, Emil, um, in chat there. Um, is that what it's all about? Is it because teenagers are taking e-cigs into school and vaping? 
Well, what about the teenagers that take a, a rucksack full of semi-automatic handguns and kill 20 of their colleagues, their fellow pupils, um, or <laughs> take their mother's high-powered rifle uh, and uh, pop a few off in the car parks? It's just, think of the children. Well, we are trying to think of the children. We're trying to think of the children living longer and their parents living longer to support them. Uh, overall in the end aren't we this think of the children thing is getting a little bit threadbare now don't you think yes anyway let's move on to some nicer stuff uh, and a couple of weeks ago i showed you the uh, evic supreme um, and the little video from joytech uh, and i had one arrive yesterday yes and there it is uh, and i thought i would put together a little bit of vt for you tonight um, and then uh, we can do a follow-up on it next week. So um, here is the EVIC Supreme when I find my video. Yes, here it is, it's the EVIC Supreme. So here it is, it's the EVIC Supreme, the second in the EVIC range from Joytech, uh, and uh, it arrived this morning by the very capable DHL delivery driver's hands working overtime on a bank holiday. Oh yes. So uh, let's uh, open it up and see what is inside. So here we have the EVIC Supreme and it also comes with an instruction manual in various languages. A little card there which tells you about the My Vapors software and also a warranty card and on the back of the warranty card is the little scratch label which you can check that you have a Joytech product. I know this is Joytech product because Joytech sent it to me. Um, you also get a battery and you get another little box and that contains the USB cable. So uh, let's take the USB cable out and have a look at that. And as you can see, it's a standard mini USB or micro USB with a USB on the other side. I'm going to label this one up and only use this for the EVIC um, because there are various cables around. But I'm going to keep the same cable for the device, I think. And then the battery comes out of the box. And it's green this time. The last EVIC was a purple one. Uh, and this is a 18650. And I'm just trying to find out what is the uh, actual milliamp hours. And it doesn't say on the battery itself, um, but it is an 18650. There you go. So we'll charge that one up. I do have another battery that I'm going to use um, so when we have a look at this. Now, Here's the unit itself, and you can see it's, uh, it's quite longer than the original EVIC. Let me get those out of the way as well. It's longer than the original EVIC. The control head is longer, and that's because it allows you to uh, do more, including upload a picture onto your screen. But more about that a little bit later. Um, let's just take it apart. The bottom tube is now stainless steel, and it is a lovely, lovely weight. Um, the battery port at the bottom is vented, and it's got a decent spring, which is going to solve the issue where you put it down, put the EVIC down too quickly, uh, and the uh, battery bounces. What you'll also notice is it's completely hollow. There's no little plinth on the inside um, that was on the original tube and we'll look at the original tube in a second and then we have the control unit itself the top screws off as you can see again this is stainless steel nice and substantial and the main difference on the top here is that the ego connector you can take off if you cross thread it 
um, and you need to buy a new one, you can get one of these separately. So as a spare. And of course on the original EVIC that was not possible. So uh, there you have it, all the component parts um, of the EVIC Supreme. Now, going back to the tubes, this is the original tube from the EVIC and you can see there it has a little plastic plinth inside um, that the control head fitted through and then the battery went on the bottom. Um, and I'm going to get asked this question, so I will tell you now that you can screw the old EVIC tube on. However, there is a little bit of a gap. If I zoom in a little bit, you can see there is a tiny bit of a gap there. Um, and I've already tried it and it doesn't like it because of that little plinth inside. Now, if you remember on my other EVIC, I got the pink mule stainless steel tube mod um, that didn't have the little plinth inside and this also fits on so same threading and again there is a slight gap however it does work uh, and I'll just show you that now put the battery in I don't know if I used the charged battery I've got an eFest 30 amp battery here I'll put that one in. On it goes. And then we do the five clicks to turn it on. And we'll just zoom out a little bit. There we go. And there you see it does get power. So it does work with the uh, pink mule tube on. However, there is that little bit of a gap, uh, which I'm not sure if that's a good idea or not to use it. So we'll put the original tube back on. And you can see there that is now flush. It's a much better fit. Um, so let me take this battery out. And we'll put it in the EVIC tube with the correct bottom section. It's very nicely built, I have to say. It's a lot nicer than the original EVIC in so much as the tube feels better. It's not as it's not as thin and and you know light as the original. Uh, and the finish is nice as well. This is the stainless steel one, of course, uh, and there is a black one available. Um, I'll just put the ego top section back on, being careful not to cross thread it because that would be a disaster, wouldn't it? And then the very top section. And there we are, we're ready to rock and roll. Now, before we go on, I must just point out that there is, I think, a fundamental flaw in the design. Um, and you will see that if I zoom right in, which I have, and here, is the USB connector and in the old EVIC it was captured so you pulled it out and it stayed attached to the device on this one it's like a rubber bung and it comes out as easy as that and there it is in my hand um, it comes out as easy as that and that then protects the port for the micro USB um, now I can see that being pulled out by accident as you're putting this into your pocket and you're losing that. That's a flaw for me. Um, so it's probably better just to keep it out all the time and then you know you won't lose it. Um, but then you do run the risk of getting dirt or dust in your USB port. So it's um yeah it's a bit of a flaw for me that one. Anyway moving on we'll look at the display. Um, and five clicks, quick clicks, and we have the power on, um, or the menu open, I should say. Uh, and it's actually quite difficult to do this back to front. So the first option you get there is power on. So if we do power on, it comes up with the Joytec symbol and gives you the date. There's no atomizer found because I've got nothing on it currently. 
uh, and we'll see here it shows you uh, wattage and voltage and then other information there's the battery there is the puff count uh, and there is some puff counts for the other um, wattages as well so when you change the wattage with the uh, ring and that's another thing I must mention actually and now the ring on the original EVIC you twisted and held to go one way and twisted and held to go the other one this is a click you can actually feel it clicking as you're doing it and you can see there it's changing the voltages and the wattages as we're going it's changing the voltage at the moment um, to get into the menu five clicks and then you have the options that were on get it into shot the options that were on the original EVIC uh, vapor set configure display device information sleep the stealth mode so it, the display will not be on uh, while you're vaping you can reset back to factory settings from the device you can also add now a four digit password um, so no settings can be changed without the password going in um, and you have power off and exit and there you go so if we uh, look at vapor set for instance then you get the switch mode you can change from automatic to manual you can set an alarm you can set your puffs puff uh, count you can reset that uh, and exit and they're all fairly easy to navigate through and it tells you what each of these items are in the manual itself uh, I'll just show you that and if I zoom out gives you all the information about each menu item and how to access that um, in a quite a well set out manual I have to say now you can also change all these things on the my vaping record software which you can download from Joytech uh, and I've got that downloaded so we'll have a look at that um, and I'll show you how to change things around and there you go I think it's 14 pages and then it goes into the other languages so that bit is the bit that's in English and that bit are the other languages um, so it is fairly comprehensive um, whether you speak English or French or Italian or what have you so let's have a look at the my vapor record uh, and I'll show you how you can change these on your screen um, and then we'll have a look at what it vapes like in the studio yeah that is the evic supreme and let me go on to uh, the device cam there we go uh, and if i can get them both into shot uh, and line them up you will see original evic and then the supreme because the extra extra bit there uh, makes it a tad longer and it's currently on screensaver mode uh, if you can see that or not possibly not actually let me um, instead of zoom in I'll hold it I'll hold it up there you go currently in screensaver mode uh, and uh, more about that after the break yeah because uh, we're going to go to the break now and then we're going to look at the uh, the software that you can muck about with it with and it's a lot easier doing it on your PC screen than it is doing it on here, I think. Anyway, see you in two. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health EV, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquid.
by Weber and I Weber Alexa, based in Yorkshire, for your AC needs. That's iWeber.co.uk and iWeber-Alexa.co.uk. I Weber and I Weber-Alexa.co.uk are proud sponsors of VeberTrails.tv. Now it's back to Vapor Scene on Vapor Trails TV. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health e Vape, UK purveyor of e cigarettes and e liquid. And indeed, welcome back to part two. Yes, um, so before the break, we looked at the uh, Evic Supreme. I'm just looking at chat there through the ads. Uh, and uh, yes, it doesn't make any noise, the alarms. Um, they just tell you what's going on, uh, like the puff count and things. Well, you'll see more about the puff count and the various um, screens um, that are available in a few seconds, yeah. Um, there's lots of things you can do to make it how you want it, including uploading your picture, which is black and white. Uh, this, it's not a colour screen, it's a black and white or white and black, because um, you can invert it as you could with the other one. Um, but uh, yes, the software is, uh, is quite good, uh, and I put this together for you last night, so uh, have a little look. This is what the My Vapor Record software looks like once you've installed it and you've opened it up in Windows. I'm using Windows 7 at the moment, um, but I have tried this on Windows 8.1 uh, and it works just fine on that. Uh, and I'm sure that the Macintosh version is also available for you Mac users. Uh, and what you will see um, on your screen is the following information. You've got total puffs there. You've got current puffs on your device. Now mine's zero because I've factory reset it so I can show you different things. Uh, you've also got flavor one, flavor two and flavor three, which I'll come on to very shortly. Uh, and also the data of the last week by puff, by time and by energy used. Uh, and that gives you the last week's puffs. Obviously there's no information on there currently. If we go to my vapor record, uh, you will see there some information. Uh, 30th of April 2013, 49 puffs. Um, that was actually an old EVIC piece of uh, information. So if I click off that and click on here and say confirm, this is my EVIC, and this information here is from the EVIC Supreme and you can select which device you're looking at. So we'll click confirm and there's no information on there because I haven't done anything. <laughs> as simple as that. So you can look at your vaping record um, by a puff here and power on the bottom. Um, you can then change that to voltage. You can change it to the time and also the atomizer resistance. And you can look by puff, 
by time and by energy used and then here is where you can change the date from which you want to look so if I look at the 1st of May up until the 5th of May which is today click through there and click on search there'll be no information because I haven't used it um, I've reset it so again you can look by day and by week and then once you've got more data you can look at by month and you can export that information to uh, keep it regularly updated as well if we go into the configuration area and you can get that from here or you can go to the home page and click on configuration here you can do a multitude of things you can set the milliamp hours of your battery it's currently set at 2600 milliamp which I believe is the right one for the battery I've got in uh, you can change that to 3400 or you can customize it and put in the exact milliamp hour of the battery you can select if your device is going to shut down after 30 minutes or 60 minutes or never or customize it and say 15 minutes if you then click modify that has then written that information to the EVIC similarly with the screen you can have the screen go out after 1 minute 10 60 never or again customize uh, and I'm going to leave that as one minute and also you can change the temperature so currently it's 24 degrees I've got it set at 45 degrees so if it goes over that it will cut out and then finally on here you can change the date and time once you click modify you get the system data right OK message and that has now written that information to your EVIC if we go to vapor settings you have quite a few options here and we'll look at the first one which is switch and you then have the choice of variable voltage and you can change the volts that are set it's currently set at 3.3 and um, but we could change that to 4.5 and click modify and the EVIC is now set at 4.5 on variable voltage or you can change the wattage and currently it's on voltage so you can change this all the way from zero all the way up to 30 yes up to 30 watts in total um, I'm going to set this at 10 because I know what I'm going to put on it and 10 watts will be suitable for that click on modify and that is now on variable wattage you've also got real-time variable voltage and real-time variable wattage and there's also a real-time variable wattage one mode and that's the only one you can set um, on MVR on this software and you can see here that you can change how that appears so you can start off and build up your wattage so at 1.4 seconds it goes to 6.7 but it starts off down here at 2 and you can change that curve so once you press your button it will build up to that wattage so that's quite a good little function I think uh, we'll stick it at variable wattage and I'll just modify that again so there we go the next item we have here is mode and stealth now manual mode is you press the button and keep it pressed in uh, for as long as you require it to on automatic mode if we change that to automatic once you press the button it will fire for up to 9.9 .9 seconds and if it's in manual mode at 9.9 .9 seconds it will cut out so you could do one press and have a five second of vaping I'll keep that on manual stealth mode if we set that on the screen will not come on while you're vaping so and you may want to stealth on a plane or stealth in a cinema 
or, or stealth just where you don't want people to know you're vaping. Uh, nothing will come up on the screen while stealth mode is enabled. And all of these you can change on the eVic itself, don't forget. So we'll keep that as off. And you can also change the screen from white on black to black on white. Click on modify and that information is written to the eVic. On the home screen this is where it gets quite good because there are various options for you to change your home screen. As you can see in the top here we have voltage and resistance or wattage and resistance. We have the battery indication. We have the puff count and we have the alarm puff. Now the top series of numbers are your current puffs and the bottom will be what you've set it at to let you know when you get there. Down here we have clock or we can have the voltage or wattage. We can put the default logo on there or you can put a user logo and the user logo you can have as a picture. So what we'll do is we'll leave these as they are uh, and we'll put a logo on. And to do that you click on import and it will tell you these things. You choose a folder where the pictures of the home screen are stored and that's normally going to be in the programs directory under Joytech and then there are three folders called home screen, boot screen and screensaver. I've created three new folders called my boot screen, my home screen, my screensaver and I've got some photos in there. They have to be named 001CY dot BMP and then they go up up to 32 so 001 002 003 all the way up to 32 uh, and the folder must contain at least one picture and they have to be BMPs so if we click OK and we're going to go to home screen or my home screen click OK and that's my little Twitter pic and that is now on the home screen. You could of course make it whatever picture you want uh, and it will obviously be in black and white. So we modify that and that is now on my home screen and we can look at that shortly. We go to alarm set, you've got a timer which you can go however many hours you want, um, you can 24 hours or have it on never. I've got all these set on never by time again customize 400 seconds up to 1600 seconds and then by puff so I've got this set at 800 puffs once I get 800 puffs it will let me know click on modify and that information has been written the boot logo and screensaver there are some default ones um, which when we start the evic up it will come on and also for the screensaver so for the boot logo, if you click on user logo and import, it will tell you again. Now, this is where you have the sequence 000cy.bmp to 031cy.bmp. Uh, and each picture needs to be different. And then you'll get a moving image, a bit like uh, the old flick books. So if you've got uh, 30 different images that are slightly different in each one then you'll get a moving image if you select one still image um, then that's all you will get so again I'll click OK and my boot logo and I have got just one picture <laughs> just my silly picture there and that will come onto the screen when it boots up and then the screensaver I've just got as default um, you can have your own and if I click on user logo again and import it'll tell you the same information sequence 000cy to 031cy both .bmp my screensaver and I've got the Joytech one in there and you'll see the images there and that is what comes up and that can come on after 1 minute, 10 minute, 60 minutes never or you can customize, you know, maybe 15 minutes, what have you. Click on modify 
and that will then upload those images onto your eVic and you get the, the uh, OK at the end. There we go. And finally, we have password. It's currently off, as you can see, but you can turn that on. Uh, and then you can change that all the way up to 9 on each one. So there are quite a few combinations you could have. So if I just put 1, 2, 3, 4... and click Modify, then that data has been written to the EVIC and in order to do anything you will need to put the password in. So those are all the different things you can change which are the same on the EVIC. It's obviously a lot easier to do it on your PC screen. We've looked at the Vapor Record and we've looked at the configuration. So that's the My Vapor Record software when used with your EVIC Supreme. Let's go back to the studio. Yeah, there you go. And I was just watching chat as I was playing out. Um, and if you're a bit geeky, like I am, um, then that kind of ability, that kind of software uh, is quite fun to use. I have to say, I probably plugged my original EVIC into my PC half a dozen times. Um, and you can see the last time I did because that information was on the screen. Um, so whether or not I'm going to use all the different functions, I don't know. Whether or not everyone's going to use all the different functions, don't know that either. But it is kind of gimmicky to have your picture, um, a little picture on there. And if I go to close the appy um, and do that, you'll see there, there it is. There's my little picture um, on the device. Yeah. Um, the, um, the password when you in initially turn it on, that's when you need the password. So uh, that's quite handy, really, um, because if you lose it, then no one else can use it uh, unless they've got the password. Um, so when, they, when the power goes out, um, they can't then use it, unless, of course, they've got the software as well. Hmm. So uh, that, is, uh, that is a possibility. Uh, what else the chat saying? Yes, there seems to be a lot of interesting mechanical mods. Um, put a battery in, put an atomizer on, press and go. Um, but there are going to be the people out there who, uh, who like the more gimmicky things. And the flavour profiles, if you look at the Joytech website, you can actually get other people's flavour profiles that they've created. And they've made the curves, um, changing the wattages or the voltages um, through the 10 second uh, of uh, vaping time. Um, so you want to muck about with different flavors and different atomizers and create a profile for that that is just perfect for you then uh, you can do that um, using that software um, but you can't do that just on the evic itself you have to be able to access the uh, the software and it is of course available for the mac as well yeah so um a little bit complicated in some senses um but then in other senses it's not that bad once you get your head around it um, but I should be using it exclusively for the next week um, to get a good, uh, a good lot of data and then I'll have a look at it uh, at the end of next week or end of this week, beginning of next week. So uh, yes, that's it. I'm out of time. Um, so uh, don't forget on the other side now there is DE Talk if you are a German speaker. Uh, don't forget tomorrow night it is Tin Your Tip with Mark and Gary. Uh, and of course Dave is not here for VT Talk on Thursday. However, Dave Kitson will be here on Sunday for Dave's Tackle Box and Dave Dawn and Keith and Kat uh, are going to be here for the Haze Hour on Monday. And again, there's no VT Talk next Thursday. Ooh, okay, that was it for this week. I will see you all next week. Have a good one uh, and um, vape happy. Thanks for watching.
Vapazine is proudly sponsored by Health Evape, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquid.